today? Uh, just more of um, general obedience training, you know, solid sit, solid stay, and um, uh, improve like his uh, unleash. When we take him on walks, he's, he gets pretty excited when he sees other dogs on leashes. So we want to fix that as well. Yeah, or Ryan, we, well, I don't know, he tends to look for things like on our table or our counters, even though we ask him not to or try to get him not to get food and stuff because we don't really let him do that. Um, I can't think. He jumps on people. Well, when we, uh, myself and the kids take him for a walk, then he's always, he's pretty, it's not aggressive, but he tends to really growl and be super protective of us. Um, and when we try to just have him sit, like he's not listening. He's like sometimes too excited. Like, yeah, he's too on excited. two on his hind paw, yeah. uh, legs, standing up. Um, whether it's a baby or someone yeah. or a dog, it doesn't matter. Um, so we don't really get to walk him ourselves. Okay. Let's go. Come on. We're gonna have Orion sit every curb. We do this every curb when we're walking through the neighborhoods. I have him sit at every curb. Do a little walk around, sit stay. It's just. Keeps him focused, keeps him thinking periodically through all of the, the walks. If he pops up, you say no. You do your little reset when you step into him, do it again. And he was very agitated. Right before we turned the camera on, we had a workman, this guy here, walk right up and kind of startle us. And he was a little bit started, startled, so he um, takes a few seconds to get back in, on track. Now he's back on track. You can always reward him. Same way, straight down, good, and then move on. Whenever you cross the street, always keep him in training mode, and then on the other side, have him sit, and then release him and be free once you cross the street. So you're always gonna cross the street like this. Okay, not, not pulling you, not rushing, but in training mode. And we'll finish this across the street. So here we are across the street. Orion's very excited, he loves going to Home Depot. Do a little circle there, sit. Okay, he's facing, we have some people with us. Sit, facing the way we're gonna go. And then here, after you cross the street, pat his chest, go. And now he's free. And he'll have free time until we get to Home Depot and we'll do some more training. So we are walking in, and you got a shot of the dog, right? We're walking into Home Depot. We practice here a lot out in public. And Orion did have an issue. You can just keep filming as we walk past and we're going to end up over there. Okay, It's a very hot day here. So you see how Orion is now when we're out in public. We're going to do a sit right here and you can actually put your back to that coke machine so you're not in anybody's way. And I'm just going to show you what we practice every day now. We got Orion to the point where he can be out in public. Hello there. And not afraid of people maybe pan to your left so you can see people watching us just like 15 feet away. So I just practice my sit stays out here and other things in the presence of distractions, people walking by, walking around, carts, other dogs, as you saw. It's a great place to practice, to build confidence. See how I'm rewarding him? Good. And you don't have to, you guys don't have to worry about the camera. So we're not even here. So as you can see, okay, we're just going to show you how I do the sit here as well. It's sit. And then we never repeat the command. If he didn't sit the first time you told him, you would just pull up with a little bit of pressure. You're not jerking, you're not popping, you're not hanging. It's just really a slight, steady, but firm pressure. His butt would hit the ground and then you release it, okay? Don't give him a reward though, unless he does it with your, your word. And as you can see, I don't even, I'm not even doing rewards half the time because he does sit so many more times, or so many, yeah, so many more times than he does other, other commands he doesn't need a reward for sitting anymore. We're, we're saving the, the rewards for the harder things that, that he does, which we'll show you later on. But stay is built into sit. You see me walking around both ways. Basic sit stay. He knows to wait until he's released. We don't have to say stay. So when you say sit, stay is built into sit. You don't have to say stay. If I hadn't been talking to you right now, I would have said one word and that would have been sit and that's it. So the way to release him if you want him to walk with you is pat your leg and say, okay, and he'll walk with you. And then the other way to release him out of a sit, sit, to let him be free and just have some free time is with your right hand, lean over, pat his chest and say, go. And he's got 
some free time. I just want to show you how he's walking in um, a real life situation with, with uh, people around and noises and everything else, how calm he's become over time since we've been practicing out in public. He's not pulling. We have a dog barking at us right now. You see that dog in the distance? And I don't know if that was ever an issue to him or not, but let's say that he was having an issue with, with a distraction like that. It's calm. Call him away from it, draw him to you, step into him, and get him going the other way or go around or something like that. That would be the smart thing to do. You don't want to walk right past a dog barking or some other situation. It's okay, bud. See, this is tough for him because, you know, when he first, he first came to me, keep coming. When he first came to me, he uh, couldn't handle any of this. Sit. In fact, and you can put your back to that right there and film me. In fact, it took me at least a week or more before I could even really touch him because he was so afraid of everybody and everything. And now he's familiar with all the people that work at my place. He gets handled by at least three different people every day. See how this is really tough for him. Okay, those carts going past. You can tell he's about to lose it, but he still even handled that. And with all these people walking past and walking around, sit, Good, he's barely handling it, but he is. He's doing really well. I wouldn't recommend you take him out into a place that's this high traffic, you know, this something with, that's like this, stressful, uh, high level of traffic. But just to show you, oh, you can walk past, it's okay. Um, but just to show you how far he's come since he's been with us and what he could handle, God forbid you had to take him into a situation like this. Um, but remember, he's with me, and I'm the one that brought him to this point. So what's really important is that you do all the basic stuff that we practice at your house, and also you know, the, what you see in the video, so that you'll be able to give him the, okay, the same impression of safety with you as he now has with me. And the way that you get that is you do all the moves the way I do them. You see when he starts getting nervous, I just reset him. So out of a sit, okay, we got people coming. Just gonna do a little left turn like that, see how people are coming up behind us. A little left turn, reset, sit. If he ever makes a mistake and a sit stay pops up or something before you, know, before you release him up, then uh, you can walk. Yeah. Um, reset him just the way you saw me reset him a couple of times. So we're gonna practice a, uh, a down stay now. Okay, so I released him out of a sit, and now this is how I want you to do down, down. You see how, actually, I think he would have done it just from, from the command, but he, um, with coming back to you because he hasn't, he has not uh, practiced this with you, I think you'll have to do down for a few days before he'll do it just with the command part of it. Make sure that you do it good. I'm gonna give him a reward. Right now in this situation, food is making him calmer in this situation. Good. Instead of just having him sit there and like suffer through all the stress, like this cart coming right at him. Good boy. As it comes up to us and passes by, look at how he almost broke, it, broke out of the downstay, but he stayed in there. Good boy. That's how far he's come, yeah. How you doing there? Hey Klaus, Klaus, sorry. And Klaus doesn't know that he's on camera right now. Yeah. Right there. See the pretty girl with the camera? Yeah. <laughs> You're waving at the girl, I know. Good. So, this is all great stuff, just to show you how much confidence he's, he's built up. And you saw how I did down. Stay is built into down. We don't say stay, I've never said stay. He just knows that when I say down, that it means to stay there until I release him. So we teach the dog to wait for the release command now. And I'm just doing the basic down stay, which of course we've already practiced at your house three, three times so far, and today's the delivery date. And uh, so I've had you practice, you know how to do this. Just do these down stays and sit stays that we're doing here in your house, in your yard, in front of your house, down the street. Work outward slowly. Don't do it around any distractions like this. This is an extreme situation, obviously, and you probably never thought he'd be able to do this here in public because I know he was 
lunging at some people or barking when he'd see them on a leash. His hair would be, hackles would be raised. And that was just a person on the street. So you see how far he's come. But um, you want to start slow with you learning to do my moves, practice where there's no distractions. Get the moves down comfortably. Have him be comfortable with you and then start going out into public and dealing with distractions gradually. Work your way up to anything like this. Good, good boy. Okay, that's how you release him. Sit, always release him from a, uh, out of a down into a sit and release him to be free from that calm sit stay, go. Because if you release him directly out of a down, he'll be anticipating that he's gonna be free and most dogs jump up and they get all excited. So we wanna release him very, in a very calm way. So it, it's a much calmer release if we say, okay, and then have him sit and then release him from a calm sit stay out of a down. That's why we do it that way. Every little bit helps with this and really the devil's in the details. It's how you do this that matters. It's how you release him. It's how you reward him. It's all, all the details that make this uh, this type of training more stabilizing than just like basic dog training. Okay, buddy. Let's go. Let's go somewhere else. Okay. We're leaving Home Depot now, and I just want to show you how he is walking out of this exit way here. When he sees people, see how he looks towards me. If he doesn't, see how he looks towards me. Good. That's what he's doing now. Instead of his hackles raising and barking, he'll turn towards me. Good. You need to watch for that because that's a learned behavior instead of what he used to do, which was, and here's somebody here. Right here, buddy. Sometimes with this much craziness, he'll need a little help because there's a bunch of noise and a cart coming this way. But it'll happen when there's a little bit of space between you and they can come from afar. So that's when he's actually more, come call him away from distractions like that. But that's when he's more triggered. If you're in a, a more open area and somebody's coming from afar, that will trigger his issues even more so than being in, in the midst of people like you saw in the other videos here at Home Depot. But he turns back to you, good, be there to reward him. That's a result of me calling him to come away from hundreds of distractions in the last few weeks. See how before I can call him to come, he turns back to me, good. So you're rewarding this new behavior pattern, which is, oh, notice something, turn back to you, get paid, and good, and it makes him feel safe, and there's no tight leash. Now we got this, this guy that kind of running, walking fast towards us, good. He looks unconcerned, turns away from him, good. See, we just got a bunch of repetitions of the right behavior. Every time that happens, good. Don't miss a, a chance to make that stronger. You're feeding that new behavior pattern where instead of what he used to do, which was, hey, there's somebody, Stay away from my mom or dad. I own them. Barking, lunging, hair, you know, standing up on his back like he used to do. Now it's turned towards you. Good boy. He stares for too long, more than just a few seconds. Come. Call him away from that distraction. Good, like that. But the more you do this like I have, the less and less you'll have to do it because he'll be doing, he'll be performing the appropriate response to that situation. You're not gonna have to be calling him to come constantly to you. See now we just have people approaching, good boy. So this is good here at Home Depot. He's used to this. We've done it all different parts of the store and the property, but now you need to do this in other places because if I just only came here, yeah, he'd be way better. He's way better than he was. But in your life with him, when I'm off the scene, he's back with you. You need to do this in a bunch of different places because dogs don't generalize well. And if I only did this, it might be just that, that where he's, only good here at Home Depot because dogs associate behavior with a location and with a person. So you need to do the same thing. Look what's coming. Keep filming. See this big thing? He hasn't seen it yet. Watch what happens. He hasn't noticed it. He's also way less come. He's way less reactive because he's built up a level of focus. He can think now. And so he's not as skittish because his brain it's obviously a muscle, it's stronger now, and we've been working it out every day since he's been with us, and now he can handle stuff that he couldn't handle before. Like before, he would have flipped out on that, but he's just like not a big deal anymore. So you keep doing this, but you have to practice these things, and like I said in one of the other clips before, start out slow, get the moves down in your house, in your yard, in front of your house, 
and then gradually work up to bigger things because now he has to learn how to be this way with you when I'm not there. At some point it's always, you know, the guy's got to do it at some point because if I did a hundred lessons with you, come, good boy. Uh, you still have to do the next step, which is you do it when I'm not there. Because my being there, my presence makes him feel safe. We have to pass him on to you. You guys do these moves, gradually work into bigger distracted, uh, distractive kind of situations, and then you'll have what I have. Okay, bud. Let's go. Sit. You always have him, you always walk him up to the person, never have the person approach you. We have somebody here at Home Depot that we're gonna do a greeting routine with. I always do it this way, I have him sit, I step over, I hand the, the new person, or it doesn't have to be a new person, uh, whoever you're doing the greeting routine with, you hand them the treat, you do a little sit stay, just to make sure he stays focused and calm. And then with your right hand, he's on your left, of course, with your right hand, pat his chest and say, go say hi. Goes and he gets the treat. And you say, come. Call him back to you. We're doing it in the, sh it in the shade here because it's a really hot day. So I have a curb right here, but normally I would back up. Sit. I would back up a little bit more uh, because, of course, when you back away, the dog is drawn to you. But... Um, because we practice the come command in a certain way, when your back is to a curb or a wall or something, he'll still come back to you without you moving away. So I did it again. Now we're going to send him over. Go say hi. And Orion is, come. Orion's a little bit skittish over here for obvious reasons. There's a lot of noises. There's trucks going by right here. People walking around. And so he's a little bit skittish here, but he's sit so much better than he was when we first got him. There's no way he could even come over here. He's so scared of everything. Do it one more time. He's sitting. Oh, he's kind of hot. No. So if he collapses, you say no. You reset him because we didn't say D-O-W-N. We said S-I-T. So he needs to stay in that S-I-T. And then we pat his chest and say, go say hi. He goes over there, gets a treat. And then I call him back to come. Come here, bud. Right here. Good, and there's some people right there talking loudly, so he's a little distracted. But this is a great place to practice. See, he's looking at them, he's kind of barking now. He's, he's skittish, sit. But when you do these, these um, you incorporate the training into exercises, like the greeting routine, it's a way to greet people in a very safe way for him because we practice it so many times every day. We plug somebody else into the, the, the greeter spot and uh, you use your sit stay, you use your go command, you use your come command. It's a great way to practice those in a real life situation. He has a problem meeting new people. He was really super scared and shy when he first came to us. He still is to a great extent, but he's so much better. And of course, these things, once we bring him home to you, will have to be continued so that he doesn't kind of forget and slide back into his old ways because he's only been, only been here for less than a month. But. Um, that's why I'm making the video for you so we, you can see how far he's gotten here. You can see exactly how we do it. You should do this greeting routine with members of your family first, people that he does know, and then start plugging in strangers or whoever comes over or when, if you're out in public, whoever you can do this with. Always send him to them. Never have a stranger approach. That's very threatening to a dog like him. So always have them stand there, give them a treat, send Orion over to take that treat from him them, whoever it is, call him back to come, do it exactly the way we've shown you here. And he'll just keep getting more and more confident over time. Okay. Okay. I want to break down the process of calling him to come because you'll be practicing that a lot. Very important command to master, of course. It could save his life someday. God forbid he gets out or gets off the leash or something and uh, you know, he wants to go across the street to see somebody or chase a squirrel or something. You want to have that rock solid recall. Right now, look over the pan over there. He's really interested in that pizza person, not paying attention to me. And I'm going to say, come. Good. You see how it was just like a reflex. Like there was no thought at all. I surprised him. That's the way that the command is in there. Now we just have to keep practicing it so it gets better and better. And when he comes back to you, you need to keep practicing it. And the, the rules are, very simply, when I'm practicing calling him to come, basically you see the way I walk him now. Left hand leash, 
a loose leash. We'll take walks every day around the neighborhood. Anything that's going on over there, we have a bunch of workmen over there now that just showed up. He's looking at them. Anything that, that he's interested in, left hand leash, I just reach in my treat pouch, right hand reward, make sure that you make this target, this fist. Come! Back away when you call him to come to you. Good. He comes to you, his nose touches your hand, it opens, it gives him the treat, you say good at the same moment. And if you need to go forward, you just step into him like that. And uh, you can just practice with one distraction, like those workers over there, I can keep doing it. Come! If he doesn't respond right away, like he did right there, good. I don't know if you, you probably saw it. I didn't stop, I just tapped him. It was just as I backed up, I tapped him like that. See how just a tap will make him come your way? Good boy. It's just, it's not to cause pain. It's kind of like a tap on the shoulder because we never correct him. He's very sensitive. Plus, he wouldn't understand why he was being corrected. So corrections with, with Orion would be inappropriate because if this is all about building up his confidence, making him feel safe. It took a long time for me to make him feel safe with me. He was very scared of me at first and I had to spend a lot of time with him for him to get more comfortable with me. He's still a little bit skittish, but he's way better now. So anyway, no rough stuff, no tight leashes. This kind of stuff, choking up, holding the leash like that, letting him pull you around, really stresses any dog out and will stress him out. Uh, always keep it loose and use your body to back away and tap as you back away. Use your target. Good boy. The reason that you call him to this closed hand is because in an emergency where there's no treat and there's no leash, he doesn't know that this is empty. So you can just pretend like you have food. When he comes to you, it would be, let's say he's off leash. Come. He comes to you. Gets you grab you hook your hand underneath his collar to make sure you got him. And you just love him up and give him a lot of attention instead of giving him the treat because you don't have a treat. Because it was an emergency and you, you didn't have any of your uh, training tools with you. But that's what this is geared to. You practice in a way so that when you don't have a leash, you don't have treats, it still works in a, in a crisis situation.